Hi everyone, I'm Matthew Moniz and I bought the Dell XPS 2015 for myself back in November of 2015. I've been using this computer on a daily basis ever since I bought it. Now when I first got it, I was going to do a review, but there were tons of little bugs that were making my experience quite annoying. I wanted to give you guys a more long-term overview of this laptop and answer the question on whether or not it's worth the purchase. Now all these bugs have been fixed and I'm ready to give my review. We're gonna do this a little bit differently. I'm just gonna talk about what I liked, what I don't like, what bugs were there, and whether or not they have been fixed. So the model I decided to go with has a sixth generation i7-6700HQ CPU, 512 gigabytes of PCIe SSD, an NVIDIA GTX 960M, a 4K touch display, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and it weighs 4.4 pounds. Now at the time I paid 2250 Canadian before tax, which is about 1700 US. Now the reason I went with this model is because I edit 4K video, and and I wanted something powerful enough to last me a few years. Let's start off with what I liked about the XPS 15. Let's face it, it was obviously the design. This is what really attracted me to buying this laptop. I wanted something that was small and compact to travel with, but powerful enough to edit video. Dell did a fantastic job of putting a 15-inch laptop into a 14-inch form factor. There's also something to be said about the combination of metal and carbon fiber. It just looks really good together. But metal is metal and it does scratch, so I started using this awesome bamboo D-brand skin that protects the lid and adds character. I'll place a link to it in the description down below. The 15.6-inch display is not only vibrant, color accurate, and a complete joy to look at, but the bezels on it are so thin that it's really hard to ever go back to using other laptops with thicker bezels. The next thing that I liked was the touchpad. This is by far the best touchpad I've used on a Windows laptop in a very long time. It's made out of glass, it's accurate, and it's big enough that my fingers never felt cramped. And the last thing is performance. Sure, it's not using a 970M or 980M and can play all the latest games at 1080p and 60 frames per second, but that's not what I bought it for. I bought it for productivity first. I can edit 4K video as long as I use a separate scratch disk, Photoshop runs well, and it scoffs at general productivity tasks such as working with Google Docs or Microsoft Office. Now even if you're a light gamer and can still handle newer titles just fine, I can play the latest game by Blizzard Overwatch and easily achieve 70 frames per second at 1080p. Now you know all the reasons why I bought the XPS 15 and more importantly why I bought it. So here are some of the things I don't like about it. First is the keyboard. The spacing is fine, it has backlighting, there's enough space to rest your palms, but the key travel distance of 1.2 millimeters is much too short for me. They're not as satisfying to press down as other laptops on the market, and I usually like to stick to 1.5 millimeters and above. The second annoyance is the webcam. I don't use the webcam often, so it doesn't really apply to me, but for people who video conference a lot, they might find the positioning to be awkward. And finally, my biggest problem is the SSD write speeds. The read speeds are fantastic, averaging around 1300 megabytes, but the write speeds are only averaging around 600. Now, if this was a regular SSD, they would be great, but because it's using a PCIe, they should be closer to 1000. Let's face it, the Dell XPS 15 isn't perfect, and to be quite honest, no laptop is, but there were a lot of bugs when it first came out. The first bug I had was the sound. Every time I would play a game or listen to music, the audio would crackle and pop. The second was poor SD card speeds. I'd start copying something, then it would just completely stop until I took the card out and placed it back in again. The third was the USB port on the right side would randomly drop connection with my storage device. And finally, a lot of people complained about poor Wi-Fi due to the Broadcom chip inside, but personally, I didn't have any issues with it. All right, so here's the bottom line. The Dell XPS 15 is definitely still worth the purchase. You're getting a great design that's compact, portable, which is 15 inches, and you're getting it in a 14 inch form factor and a marvel of a display. All the bugs have been fixed, so any of those concerns you had before, you can now not worry about it. Now, if you want to save a few bucks and the design factor is not that important to you, then you can go for something like the Asus ZenBook Pro. So I want to hear what you guys have to say about the Dell XPS 15. If you haven't already, did you experience some of the same bugs that I did? Maybe if you had your own bugs, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And as always, I will see you in the next video.